Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. In today's Auto Line Daily, VW misses its cost targets with MQB. Those economic sanctions on Russia are crippling car sales. And later in the show, it's time for You Said It. Now let's get to the news. Earlier this year, there was a lot of speculation that then Ford CEO Alan Mulally would take over the top spot at Microsoft. That didn't happen, but maybe Microsoft will wish that it did because Mulally just got appointed to the board of directors of Google. With that company fully committed to autonomous driving, sure looks like Google wants someone with deep knowledge and experience in the auto industry to help make autonomy a reality. When Volkswagen unveiled its MQB platform strategy a, a few years ago, it called the program its strategic weapon. VW said MQB would slash material costs by 20% and assembly time by 30%. The idea of MQB is to share a lot more components across different model lines. Some analysts predicted that VW would cut costs by $19 billion a year before the decade's out. Well, so much for that theory. Bloomberg reports that VW now says it has to find new ways to cut costs by another 5 billion euros because it needs to boost productivity, especially in Germany with its high labor costs. While some analysts praise the MQB strategy, others accuse VW of grossly exaggerating the benefits and cost savings. In fact, some say that MQB is actually a very expensive way to try and cut costs. The new Smart 4.2 and 4.4 will make their debut later today. But the automaker is giving us an early preview with this set of three sketches. As you can see, the styling was reworked all the way around and the interior is completely new as well. No other details were released, but it may end up sharing some of the powertrain options that are available with the Renault Twingo, which made its debut back in February. As you'll remember, Daimler and Renault jointly developed these vehicles. BMW says that its electric i3 is flying off the showroom floors. In the first half of the year, 5,400 i3s were sold. And now it's putting its money where its mouth is. BMW and Samsung just signed a memorandum of understanding to have Samsung supply more lithium ion batteries for the i3 and the i8 plus future hybrid models. BMW says that contract is worth several billion dollars. The economic sanctions that the international community put on Russia over its annexation of Crimea are hurting car sales. The latest figures from Ward's Auto shows that light vehicle sales plunged 17% in June. To help its struggling auto industry, Russia is banning state and municipalities from buying foreign-made cars. They can only buy Russian-made ones. Public transportation and emergency vehicles are also included in the ban, as well as agricultural and construction equipment. In China, buyers want the latest and greatest, and they're not particularly brand loyal. Not too surprising, but what's even more interesting that the introduction of a new model can have a major impact on sales of the current model. For example, Toyota announced a new Corolla was on the way, and sales practically came to a dead stop. In April, Toyota sold 10,000 Corollas in China. But after announcing a new model was on the way, sales plummeted to just 266 Corollas. Automakers like Volkswagen and Hyundai are constantly introducing new products and redesigning current models. Japanese automakers in China were kind of slow to catch on to this trend and are now introducing as many new models in as short a time as possible. And like Toyota with its Corolla, they're seeing severe highs and lows in sales volume during those transitional periods. So it can be kind of hard to figure out how a manufacturer is performing from month to month and even year to year. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. Come on in. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. 
And now it's time for some of your feedback. Todd T. makes a great point about Johan Denison quitting Infinity after only two years and jumping over to Cadillac. He says, regarding Johan Denison, quite a development. It's hard to believe he wasn't under a non-compete of some sort. You know, what a great point Todd T. makes. Automakers almost always force executives to not work for a competitor for at least a year after they leave the company. Otherwise, they forfeit their severance pay and any other benefits going to them. The fact that Johan not only quit so abruptly, but showed up in Detroit only one day after word leaked out of Nissan that he had quit, tells me things did not end well between Johan Denison and Carlos Gowen. Buzzard has a question about all these recalls. How much responsibility, also known as blame, do the suppliers shoulder for all the recalls? Do they have to pay the manufacturer for defective parts unless the defect can be traced to the design or engineering of the part? Well, yeah, suppliers do have to pay for defects if it's clearly their fault. But sometimes they supply good parts that go bad. I remember one instance when batteries that Delphi was shipping to General Motors were failing. GM blamed Delphi, but Delphi was able to prove that GM had designed the battery location to be too close to the exhaust manifold, and that was causing the failure. Doug heard our report that the Consumer Federation of America wants to force automakers to change the way they report the fuel economy of their vehicles in their advertising. He says, only posting the highway MPG is somewhat misleading. City, highway, and combined is the best for transparent advertising. We completely agree, Doug. It's misleading for automakers to cherry pick the biggest number and only advertise that. To me, that's like advertising the price of the car without including shipping and destination charges. Now that is deliberately misleading. Volkswagen is struggling in the US market and Kit Gerhardt thinks he may know why. Here's my message to VW, he says, from someone who has actually bought five of them, four of them liquid cooled. We who buy your cars don't want Americanized VWs. You listening, VW? Your fans want German cars. After all, your tagline is Das Auto. Boy, we sure got a lot of questions about this next one. Ron Paris saw our report on the new Hyundai Sonata. Okay, I gotta ask, what is that weird black rectangular blank out plate, for lack of a better term, just below the Hyundai insignia on the new Sonata's grill? A lot of you already answered this question in the comment section of AutoLine Daily. That blank out plate hides the radar system for the adaptive cruise control. You know, some automakers just do a better job of hiding it. Mercedes makes the plate part of the badge on the grill. Hey, thanks for all your comments and questions. Your input helps us bring more complete coverage to everyone else. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks so much for making AutoLine Daily a part of your day.